started, we've got a lot to cover in an hour and a half, and uh, I'm going to hit you with a lot, and I want to allow time for, because this one I really want you to ask questions, and I'll be happy to get on the, the state website to show you how to run some reports, but uh, I guess to get started, I'm Sandy Rattler, uh, I'll be your cruise director today on how to use EVA and get SWAM certified and so forth, and I'm with the Department of Small Business and Supplier Diversity. Uh, uh, everyone should have a copy of the presentation, but also for you those that are taking, you can actually scan the QR code on your uh, device and have the presentation right there because in some of those reports on the printout, it might be hard for you to see. But I've also, to try to help you as we start moving into doing reports, I've given you a little cheat sheet on how I have uh, run some of those reports, although I'm happy to hear from you afterwards. That way you'll be able to have it and you'll know what that girl with the accent said I see you follow along. But I tell you what, before we get started, let's go around the room, introduce yourself, and if you will let me know, are you using Virginia's electronic procurement system and how you use it would be helpful. So uh, we'll start. How about we start in the back, Jan? Okay, I'm Jane <coughs> Coleman. I'm with People Incorporated. I'm not using it at this time. I'm Deborah McCraskin. I'm with the Bristol Herald Courier. And Okay. Uh, John Rock from Rock City, Burns Compliance in Grundy, Virginia, and I'm not in the league, am I? Yeah. I've got some people who <laughs> tell me if I am or not, so I'm not. Yeah. I'm a sidekick, Mary Osborne. Hi, Mary. I'm Chad Peter. My name's Cindy Brewer, and I am not using the site yet. Okay. Sure. I'm Sharon Stevens. I work at Countryside Realty. Uh, I'm taking these classes to become more up to date on the technology and what I might be able to take back at work or help my husband with. Okay? Uh, my name is Jennifer Miller. I, uh, my service is a care taxi service. Um, I've actually kind of checked it out a little bit, but kind of like not exactly sure. Okay? <laughs> well, I'm here for Make slaughter and I'm not using Jennifer Harmon, kind of, <laughs> or kind of, we get emails in for D.R. Allen and Associates, um, but we haven't actually gone in to do a job for them. And Natasha, you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Natasha Snyder. I'm with People Incorporated. Uh, we do community economic development, and um, we sometimes have the privilege of traveling around the Virginia countryside with Sandy. And we were just employed yesterday together. Oh. Spreading good cheer. That was great. And Jennifer, introduce yourself. I'm Jennifer Davidson, and I'm the administrative assistant here at the Small Business Incubator. Jennifer gets it done here. And hey, you want to quickly introduce yourself? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm Wendy Thomas. Okay, good. Well, let's get started. Um, for those of you that have never been on EVA and know about the system, what I'm going to go over today is basically how you do business with the Commonwealth. You don't just pick up the phone and say, hey, um, Virginia Highlands Community College, I want to sell, I want to cater your events. There's a system that you have to be on to be able to sell to the Commonwealth. Also, I'm going to tell you why Executive Order 33 and uh, 20, which is the latest one, how that impacts you and why that's important for small businesses in Virginia to be part of this. And then you're going to hear me make the, um, the, uh, say an acronym called SWAM. And what that is, that stands for Small, Small and or Woman and or Minority Owned Business. And there is a special set aside uh, for government procurement in Virginia for SWAM certified vendors. And that's one of the things we're going to really spend some time on, as well as why it's important for you to get your micro business designation as part of Executive Order uh, 20. But really the thrust of why I want to spend some time and help you really understand is in Virginia there's a lot of data that's on the Electronic Virginia system that you can extract to find out who is your target market in Virginia, which target being agencies. Uh, what are they procuring? Who the buyers are? How much are they spending? Um, who are they buying them from to know what your competition is doing? <coughs> how you can better target your market from a marketing standpoint. And the number of y'all come to marketing workshops, we talk about how important it is to target your market. It's not just be throwing things in different directions if you've got to really hone in to make the most value. 
and I'm going to show you how to run, uh, to get registered and run various reports. Any time during this, <clears throat> excuse me, if you have questions, please don't uh, hesitate to, to, to stop me. I get excited about this stuff um, and uh, I might get carried away. Just a little bit about who we are, kind of doing my promo, the Department of Small Business and Supplier Diversity. Uh, we're an economic development organization in the Commonwealth. Our primary focus is to help individuals, A, to get started, and B, most importantly, is to help them to expand and, and be profitable in Virginia. And we do that in a couple of areas. Focus, for, for example, we have a financing arm that can help you access capital to expand your business or perhaps buy equipment. We also um, have a call center, a help desk that you can call and ask any kind of question about doing business in Virginia. It's called the Virginia Business Information Center. It's an 800 number that you can call. And then we also spend a lot of time in helping people access to markets, which is what this workshop is all about today, is helping you to tap into Virginia state government uh, markets. And then finally is we do a lot of workshops, and I've seen many of your faces at a number of the workshops that we um, that we did within my 23 county service area. Late arriving is uh, uh, Kathy Lowe, she's the director here. We were on time, had to stay on time, so. I know, the mayor called and was asking about specifics for tomorrow's announcement, so. So uh, Kathy I is the uh, director here, and uh, we partner a whole lot, and she's also uh, vice mayor with the town of Abington. So if you need anything, just go to her, make her do it for you. <laughs> she gets it done. I enjoy working with her. Uh, I mentioned that we have a call center, the Virginia Business Information Center. This is where, let's say, that you're wanting to start a business. Let's say that I want to start a salon in Fairfax, Virginia. How do I go about it? You can call and talk to one of our counselors to tell them where you want to be, what you wanted to do, and then they can start directing you to the agencies and the steps that you have to do uh, in Virginia to be uh, set up for a salon. For example, you've got to get your uh, business a license at um, Fairfax County, you've got to get a, a Department of Professional Occupational License to actually operate and uh, be a hairstylist in, in Virginia. Uh, you got to get your business set up. If it's an LLC, you might need to go to the State Corporation Commission, all those kind of things. They can answer those questions for you because it's tough sometimes with my schedule to always catch me, although I'm pretty good at emails, but if I'm involved in a couple hour session, and you need to answer that question, call our 800 number. Um, another thing that we do and I do a lot of is entrepreneur workshops. And it's from a variety of topics. Anything that, that helps businesses not only get started. As Natasha said, we were employed yesterday. We did a workshop on what we call the Entrepreneur Express on helping folks in the Floyd County area that are wanting to start a business or also expand the business and we had a uh, way to bring in chairs which is the kind of workshops I like to do. We probably had uh, close to 30 plus people there. We even had some high school students who are already starting to look at entrepreneurship in the future which is always exciting um, opportunity. Uh, but I do workshops on how to use an iPad, e-commerce, marketing which you know again if you, anyone is around me you know marketing is one of my loves is helping people uh, use some marketing to, to expand their business. And I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one counseling. If we can't meet here, I'll come to you. If you need just someone to help you, actually, how do I navigate to Virginia's electronic procurement system? Or I'm really stuck, um, you know, how can I better market myself? You know, I'm, the only thing I'm doing right now is Yellow Pages, which always makes me cringe when I hear businesses are putting everything into Yellow Pages. My mother's almost 84. She doesn't even use Yellow Pages. She uses. She found this thing called Google on her iPad, and that's you know you've got to change with the times. And uh, we talk about things like that, or whatever it is you're looking for, resources, financing. Uh, I've been in economic development for over 25 years, so if I don't know the answer, I usually know who to contact. Uh, I know people, you know, as they talk to us. So raise your hand if you want to have more business and more sales for your organization. Exactly, that's why we're here. And that's the whole reason that we are wanting to help businesses tap into this market in Virginia. Because it is a great resource because we purchase annually almost $7 billion in goods and services and construction. For a small business, tapping into that market could make the difference in you buying that new equipment or 
one month, you know, you're struggling to even pay the power bill. Well, if you get a, a deal with the state, maybe that'll help you uh, generate some more revenue to uh, uh, make those payments. I mean, it's whatever your needs are. Uh, just getting on it and, uh, is one thing. you got to work it. But when you're on the system, you have access to 245 agencies. Uh, those are agencies like our agency. We're a state agency. Basically, anyone that's receiving state funds has to do their purchasing through this system. It could be a college, university, it could be the Department of Prisons, it could be DDOT, you name it. Uh, if they're receiving state funds, they have to go through this system to do their procurement. Um, and the other thing, once you're on that system, you're going to be part of the other 88,000 plus vendors, vendors being businesses just like yourself that are selling to the Commonwealth. So you, you do have, just like in the private sector, you do have competition. And hopefully I can give you some tips of how you can kind of help you um, get more insight and, and more targeted uh, and connect to those markets. And if your business is not part of these numbers, uh, you need to be there. Because uh, it's, it's, again, it's a whole, another whole market. And as I said, if you're selling to the comp or if you're buying, uh, if I'm a state agency receiving state funds, I have to go through this system to do my purchasing. Just to give you an idea, and I'm going to show you how you can run some of, these, some of these reports, but sometimes I will be maybe talking with the Chamber of Commerce in a community and I say, do you have any idea who is, how businesses in your community, could be an economic development, the Chamber, you name it. So do you know what businesses are doing within your community and, and selling to the Commonwealth? And you can actually go there, and I can show you in a minute, how you can run reports to find out how many businesses have sold something to the Commonwealth uh, during, the, let's say, the last six months or the last year. And this is an um, annual uh, a snapshot. And I did this just looking at the city of Roanoke. Um, and last year, over $193 million uh, that Virginia purchased from businesses that are located within the city of Roanoke. Uh, even the city of Salem had over $17 million. Uh, Roanoke County, $33 million. Uh, was procured <coughs> businesses within those communities. Does that not help you get a little excited about the opportunities that are there? And that is Washington. Um, I didn't run one, but we can I'll show you how you can run one real quick. Um, and just to kind of give you an idea of what Virginia is procuring, um, these are the largest uh, purchasing uh, by uh, commodity code, and you'll hear me say an acronym called NIGP code. That stands for National uh, Institutional Government Procurement Classification Code. It's kind of like the old SIC back in the day. This is for government procurement. And it's NIGP code. But the largest, which is no surprise, is construction through VDOT. And last year we purchased over $974 million uh, to contract construction. It could be um, folks that, that uh, sell the tar, um, the paving, and so forth like that. Uh, maintenance and road repair, which if you've been on 81, you're going to be seeing those mobile <laughs> patching going on right now, patching from where the, uh, all the salt that's been put on the road. We did $689 million for that. Um, I'm just going to kind of go through, pick up some engineering consulting. That's $123 million that we purchased. Uh, software maintenance and support. Uh, some of you all probably heard of the Northrop Grumman um, Support Center in, at Lebanon. They provide, the state does not have IT people on staff now. But, uh, several years ago, the, the Commonwealth, um, uh, I guess, contracted that out to a private firm, which uh, Northrop Grumman does that. So anytime I have an IT question, question on my phone, I go through Northrop Grumman. And there's a call center uh, that has a couple hundred people employed at Lebanon, and that's part of those numbers there. Um, we did uh, 86 million in snow and ice removal. I wonder what Virginia did in the last three weeks. Uh, it's been painful, wasn't it? Uh, let's say um, automobile, uh, school buses, SUVs. Uh, we've been purchasing uh, cars. It's 47 million dollars. Even servers, microcomputers, uh, over $40 million. And those are the top spins. And those usually change each year depending on the needs. But usually construction 
especially road, a VDOT work is usually the highest. Uh, why you need to get your business certified? Um, back during the Kane administration, he came out with Executive Order 33 where he basically said that I want to see out of that $7 billion that we purchase annually, I want to see at least 40% of that purchasing go to a small, small and or woman and or minority owned business. Well, now this administration says we want to even go better than that. We now, he uh, issued Executive Order 20 back in the uh, in August that said, okay, I want to see over 42% of that uh, purchasing go to not only a SWAM certified vendor, but also a micro business. I'm going to show you what that's all about. <coughs> that gives you access to anything, a special set aside for anything that's purchased under $10,000, which most everybody in here is probably other than if you are selling, uh, doing large construction projects, you're going to fit within that category. And the SWAM certification, uh, again, it's a mandatory set aside for small, small and or woman and or minority owned business. By the way, the definition of a small business is no more than 250 employees or no more than 10 million in sales for a SWAM certified vendor. Now, to be um, part of the Executive Order 20 to get your micro business designation, not only do you have to already have your SWAM certification or be getting it, but you also um, can get your micro business designation, which a micro business is 25 employees or less, they're no more than 3 million in sales. So if you're already SWAM certified, I'm going to show you the link of how you can get your business uh, designated as a micro business. And if you've not done your SWAM, now while you're doing your SWAM certification, you can also have them do your, your uh, micro at the same time. And I'll show you those forms as well. Any questions so far? There'll be a test afterwards, and there'll be an essay, so you better be listening. <laughs> Some of the things you need to think about as we move forward when you're looking at this market, and again, it's not just kind of like in marketing. You just don't set up an account like on social media and think, well, I don't have to do anything. You have to, you really, if you want to make something out of this, you have to work at it. You have to network, and you've got to run reports to find out um, what, what my target markets are. And you know, that's what you want to do, is you want to run reports to find out who is my target market. Uh, is it um, the community college system? Especially if you do consulting on training, um, you know, you might want to target the, the community college uh, and the universities to do that. Uh, you want to di differentiate yourself from your competitors too, and that's part of the networking and, and building relationships with those buyers within state government. And then finding out where I want to target uh, in regards to uh, selling to the Commonwealth. For example, if I do uh, uh, landscaping and lawn work, you know, that I contract out with Virginia, it probably wouldn't be cost effective for me living in Big Stone Gap, is where my business is, is to drive and do contracts in Virginia Beach. So you need to be focused the same way with catering and so forth. So you need to figure out what is my target area within the Commonwealth that I want to focus on. And then do your research. Do you like that? I use an app to do that. And that's where uh, Bucks Bunny is actually running spin reports that I'm going to show you how to do. Uh, because that's key. I, I don't know of another public or private sector market that you want to target that you can actually garner so much market intelligence from free. That's what I love. That's my favorite four-letter word is free. Any time along the way, there's help. If you, as I say, you've got me, you can contact, or you can call our um, anyone from our uh, Virginia Information Center or any of our folks in our agency that may be focused. You have a specific question on your SWAM certification. We have people that specialize in that, same way with micro business or whatever your needs are. There's help along the way. Be patient. It takes a while with any market to develop those relationships and get the word out that you're there. And um, so be patient, but also when you're getting some of your certifications, it's not overnight. It's going to take some time. But uh, you can do it because there's 88,000 other folks that are doing it. Um, and there's also lots of times there's events to where you can network with these buyers. And if there's an opportunity for you to network, 
it could be that you have to drive to Roanoke or to Richmond, but if it's a large enough event and there's the buyers from those agencies that you're wanting to focus on, I would say, you know, get in the car and think about going and networking with those folks. Because you can, again, if it's under that 10000 that's an opportunity for a special set-aside that they might just call you and say, can you give me a price on, um, I need five TVs to go in a classroom. Can you give me a price? And they can do it that way, under the 10000 just because you're on the system, you've gotten all your certifications and so forth, does not mean you're guaranteed. You've got to work at it, just like any market. When you're on there, not only are you access to all these markets, but uh, not only in Virginia that, that the state is purchasing over $6 billion, you have local governments that, like Washington County, the town of Abington, that has procurement. Now, in Virginia, uh, local governments are not mandated to have to use this system. Some do. There's over um, uh, 595 local governments that are on there, but the governor can't say you have to use this. It's a local. So even though you're getting on the state system, I would actually then suggest that you kind of network <coughs> and find out what those communities that you want to target is find out with who, within, for example, Washington County or Buckhannon County or any of the counties, I would find out who does the procuring and some localities have a special way that you sign up to be to sell. I know Roanoke and the city of Roanoke, Roanoke County and the city are totally different. They have different guidelines in setting up. You have to walk through all those hip, those hoops. But once you get on there, that could bring an a great opportunity for you. Um, once you're on the system too, you can actually uh, look at what active Solicitations are out there, or as we call them, quick quotes, where somebody just put up yesterday that I need, uh, I want a, a quote, and you've got till 5 p.m. tomorrow to respond on. Um, it could be that I want a um, hundred um, shirts that are monogrammed. I'm just pulling stuff out of, out of my head, but that's where you can see some quick quotes because a lot of times, again, under that 10,000 purchase. They put them out on quick quotes. And I encourage businesses that if they go this route, they need to pinpoint or assign someone within their business to actually work this system, to go to make it a habit, maybe the mornings or the evenings, is to go and see what kind of quick quotes and solicitations are out there. Also, when you get on that system, you need to uh, be able to receive emails, and I encourage if you've got a smartphone, put your email address on there because it could be a quick quote and you have a certain amount of time to respond. And if you haven't checked your email for two or three days, it's not the state's fault. So you could miss out on an opportunity just because of, I just didn't think. It's what usually teenagers say, isn't it? I just didn't think. So go on there and be smart about it. And you can also look at some statewide initiatives. Uh, you can um, look at bidding opportunities online, but there's so much, and I can't stress enough all the market research you can do on the system. And uh, again, it's free. It's right there. So if you go on the Virginia's uh, uh, website, and I've got you a picture on that handout, you go on the main page, it's eva.virginia.gov. This is the, uh, the upper part of the opening page when it comes up. And this is where I can find out. It'll tell you how much Virginia spent. Usually it's year to date. Um, it will also tell you the agencies, and you can actually look up agencies. Or I have this happen a lot of time. I'll say, Sandy, do you know um, if there, if um, such and such firm is still operating in Virginia? Or I need to find out who's a point of contact or an address for a business. A lot of times, what I'll do is right here out of these eighty-eight thousand. If you hit that, that'll bring up a page where you can actually put their name in. Or if I want to search for every business in Buchanan County or Grundy, Virginia address, I can put that in there and it'll give me a list uh, that I can call that out. That's a quick way to uh, access folks. My screen's cut off down here, but also you can look on, uh, these are statewide uh, contracted projects. Uh, contracts like, for example, uh, you know, cars. Um, PC equipment, some of the larger tickets are usually statewide contracts and they may be for 
three-year contracts or five years, and you can also look for opportunities that those things are up for renewal. You can find them there. Uh, you can also see where, um, where quick quotes are at, where you can look for active solicitations right there. You can also look for future bidding opportunities. Again, these are a lot, a lot of times for the larger projects. But this right here is where you is the gold mine of information. This is where you can spend a lot of time on these procurement transparency public reports where you can find out who's buying what I'm selling, how much you're spending, um, and if you don't spend some time on there, you're missing out on an opportunity. And I've met with clients that's been on the EGA system since the early, I mean, 20 years ago, and they don't really know how to run the system, so they're just actually, they're just, they're just responding. They're not doing anything actively to, um, to get more business. Uh, when you're on there too, you're going to not only see the buyers and bidders list, who they are, um, but when you get registered, you're going to be able to receive those email solicitations. When you do set up an account, when you register your business, you want to make sure that you have it to where you receive the electronic uh, notifications. We don't send faxes anymore requested for solicitations. So make sure, that's why I tell small business, make sure if you've got a smartphone, you can have that email address that comes to your phone so you can, you can respond to that. Um, and you want to be able to be it online because when you set your account up, it's going to give you a login and password. And some of us, sometimes we forget that password, but you can always call their customer service number. I know, John, that never happens to you. But sometimes it happens and uh, to the best of us, and you can always call their customer service line, and they can help you reset it. Any questions? Don't forget to test. When you're getting ready to register on Virginia, you're going to have to do a little homework before you actually get on there and fill out the application. The key things that you're going to have to have is your tax ID or EIN number for your business. Now, some sole proprietors, which I strongly encourage, they don't use their Social Security number, but that's asking for trouble for anybody that does that. But have your tax ID and EIN number. You'll also need to get a DUNS number, and if you've never gotten a DUNS number, that's through Doug Bradstreet, there's a link on the registration site that you can go and get a DUNS number. Sometimes uh, you can uh, request a number and it can happen by the end of the day or it can take a couple of days. That's just, that's done. Uh, we have no control over that. Uh, the other thing that I want to call your attention to that's the most important is your commodity codes. Being on there is one thing, but if I'm actually going to look to see who carries, um, I need to purchase, uh, I want high def. TVs that have um, uh, smart uh, smart TVs that I can access the internet for. I mean, they're all uh, all kinds of specifics. Then I need to know who provides that and who sells those in Virginia. So don't just put in one commodity code. A great example is people that do that is caterers. Well, it's great to have the catering on there. But do you just do catering? Do you do party trays? Do you do dessert trays? Do you do drinks? Do you do party planning? Do you do uh, events set up? You're missing out. You're just putting in one commodity code, but they might have put in a commodity code for event planning, and you're missing out on that opportunity. Put as many commodity codes as you can possibly think of that reference what you sell. And if you're trying, you want to figure out, and you want to make the easy way out, is when we run some of those reports, see what your competition is doing, and we can look up their commodity codes. You can spend hours looking, but if somebody's already done the homework, just, just use that. That's the other thing about having this, being able to <coughs> see it online. Um, one of the other things, too, is if you have a certain area that you want to serve in Virginia, when you sign up your account, you want to be able to put on there that I only want to serve Southwest Virginia or Central Virginia or the parts of Virginia that you want to, to serve. Again, an example could be that someone might have received, uh, uh, they want to, they received a bid to re um, do all of the HVACs in South in Virginia. It's probably not cost effective for them to send somebody all the way to Big Stone Gap just to change a few filters. 
but that brings an opportunity for them to subcontract that out to someone that's in based on that variance. Do you have a question? Tasha? I do. Um, what is this? Uh, the Dunn's number? What is that? I'm Dunn and Bradstreet? Yeah. You heard Dunn's? Um, it's when the system was first developed, that was another way that they used for tracking. And, you know, Dunn and Bradstreet's been around forever, and when you do set up an account, it's going to ask you who you are, the type of business that you're set up as in a sole proprietor, of who the point of contacts, the main um, management, and also the type of services that you offer. Okay. So it's just something it's just to assign to a number to sort you. Okay. So but it's free. Once that's once you're registered with that, do you have to update that every so often, or like unless you need to change if you were making eight track tapes, and now I'm going into <coughs> CDs or like whatever it is, then you need to go in there and change it periodically. Okay, so I couldn't use that like if I wanted to know if somebody was still in business or. You can look them up. You can do a look up by uh, go in by state, mm -hmm. and then you can put in the name of the business and you can check them uh, there. Would it give like their last active date the, the first? I don't think it gives it that unless you log on okay. and you and that's when you get into more okay. uh, private information that they know. My question is, so you go in and you register your business uh -huh. and you get your Dunn's and Red Street number uh -huh. and uh, you register it under one thing and then your business grows and you, you're another thing. Do you have to you keep that same number the whole time? No. Oh, wait, wait, the Dunn's number? Yes. That stays the same. Stays the same. But, like, for example, if you, on your EVA um, account, when you when you set up an account, you're going to receive a login and password, and I encourage everybody to do that periodically. Just go, you can log on to your account under maintenance, and then you might want to add or take away commodity codes that you don't want. And if you don't listen to anything else I say, listen to this. If your email address changes or your phone number changes, go in there and change it now. A great example, there's a large car uh, uh, dealership in uh, Claypool Hill, Virginia. A few years ago, they called me and said, Sandy, we're not getting any hits. We're not getting any solicitations from the state. And usually when they say that, I automatically know the answer. But I was going to be driving through Claypool Hill, and I said, I'll tell you what, I'll stop in on my way. So we went and I sit down, got my computer out, and we logged out to their account. And come to find out, they had moved to a new location from Rich Lanes to Clayton Hill, which means their phone number and fax numbers changed. The person that they had as the point of contact for email address had not worked there in five years. It's not the state's responsibility to say, hey, your emails keep bouncing back. It's up to you. And you won't, you'd be surprised at how many businesses have had that happen. It's just one of those things I didn't think. Or someone left the company and the management forgot, well, they were the point of contact force. Sometimes I encourage people to put two point of contacts on your account. It's something to look at. Especially if somebody's out sick for a while. We don't know what the future holds and that you don't want to miss out on opportunities for solicitation. So if you have two emails set up for your business, you could go ahead and put both those emails in there? If you, it's up to you. It's your account. Okay. I have a question on the DUNS number. We submit our financial statements every year. You sure we have a DUNS number? I do. But how, every time I ask to see what's on the report, they want to charge like $300. Yeah. And we'll That's DUNS. That's DUNS. Are you aware of a way to look at our reports free? We should be allowed, just like a consumer credit report, to be able to see what's on there. I do not know. That's one of those things I'll have to to check. I, I do not know. Do you have to pay a fee to, be, to do that? Well, used to, and I've been at Brock's TV for a long time. They used to give us one free every year, but I've not got one in five years. Every time I ask, they tell me it's now part of the package. Uh, well, that's just probably they, because they're losing the business. They ask you for the information. Yeah. They, so they, 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 they they ask for the, they, they'll send you a, a questionnaire and ask for your financial. If you don't give it, what happens? They'll ask you again. They'll keep asking every year. Now, I tell people too when you register for that, there's an option, there's a block where you need to make sure that you, I can't remember if you check it or uncheck, that you do not want to receive marketing because they'll burn it up for you. Yeah, they wear me out. And I just, you know, I, I, I send them the hard copy letter saying that we're not interested at this time. 
Now, be sure you do that. That you, I, I can't remember if it's check or, or you on check that you do not want to receive marketing uh, contacts and so forth. You know, and, and I'm sure you all already said this, but the thing about that one is that you think the way the the way the solicitation comes, it looks like it's a requirement that you need to comply with. You're talking about duns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, you know, every time I get something that looks official, I'll try to comply and you know, and that's it's kinda like those people getting those supposed emails from the IRS to verify your account. It's just one of those things you gotta be careful about. Yeah. <clears throat> Sandy. Yes. Can I have one of your Oh, I'm sorry. Um, but it, but again, to get where you go to get registered is eva.virginia.gov. And again, anytime you get stuck, they've got an 800 number that they have folks that are there to answer those questions. Uh, I should point out that we have nothing to do with the EVA system. I mean, we don't we don't have anything to do with the administration of it, but uh, we are partners with them. So if you ever run into any issues, if you're not getting anywhere, please feel free to call me and I'll see if I can uh, get to the bottom of it. Um, when you go on to the EVA system, there's going to be a link at the top of the page that says, I sell to Virginia, then it'll come up with this page. And what you want to do, if you're not a vendor already, you want to say, I want to register to become a, a, a vendor on EVA. And then what it will do, it will take you to another page. Uh, by the way, here's some of the purchasing rules I will point out to you for small businesses, or small purchases um, under um, 100,000 or more or less, uh, we only have to get one bid, and anything over 100000 now we have to get three bids. And that's why it's important to know, make those relationships with those buyers. Like at Southwest Virginia Community College, to me that would be a great target for you to find out who's doing buying there that you can contact, even with plug-ins, adapters, and so forth like that, uh, you can do. Um, Again, you need to distinguish between what they are. Uh, most of the time, the, the uh, 100,000 or more are mostly usually for large construction projects. That brings up something else that um, uh, for businesses to consider. For example, um, let's say Stanley Steamers. You know Stanley Steamers are. They do carpet and ductwork clean. When the franchise in Roanoke first got on the EVA system, not only did they put themselves in there to provide, you know, the, the carpet cleaning and the duct work, but they decided, I want to also be on there as a contractor. Their rationale was that when these large con contracts come out, they want to go to the pre-bid conferences where all of those contractors that are buying for those projects are at, where they can start, here's my business card, or, you know, this is what we offer. You know, we can do that. And when their first year on the EVA system, they sold as much or more under third-party contracting uh, going to those pre-bid conferences because a lot of times the contracts are for a turnkey, which means, you know, Southwest is not just subbing out to all the other stuff. They're going to one contractor, and then they have to sub everything out. So that was their opportunity to, to get a jump on their competition by networking with those contractors. And by, by the way, we're also SWIM certified, and now we're micro business. So you want to let them because they have to make those procurement set asides as well, especially for construction projects like VDOT and so forth. I get a lot of calls from businesses. And, um, I don't think I'm catching the drift. Okay, you're a company, but you want to sub it out to somebody else. Does that person have to be verified? Uh, verified? Or because it's your company that took the contract, they do not also have to be verified. Uh, the way most of the contracts are now being approved is they also, any sub that they do, has to go to a SWAM certified vendor. If you ever notice, uh, look in the classifieds and you'll see where there's a lot of companies that are looking for uh, contracting opportunities. It could be that they're doing a water line and they're looking for a woman-owned or uh, minority-owned or a SWAM certified vendor, 
That's because because their contract stated that any sub work has to uh, uh, what percentage of that has to go to one of those SWAM certified vendors. Grandpa, <coughs> I was just wondering if you aren't dealing with the company with the government directly, but you're dealing with the company. Does the smaller business have to be verified? Yes, that's what I'm saying. They have to be in most cases SWAM certified. Oh, okay. And so it's even though it's someone else getting the contract, they too have to be. Yes. Okay. That's why when I introduce myself at that pre bid conference, I want to let you know who we do, what we, what we offer. By the way, here's a brochure that uh, we're SWAM certified, and I, mm -hmm. I even put that on my materials and okay. on my pro business because if I'm that contractor, that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to find all the people that I know and ask them to give me a uh, bid on providing that all on the gravel. That's what I was wondering, you know, for like interstate, you know, the contractor takes a bid. He's tied up, he can't send his people out, so he's got to get somebody else he's to help it out. That person has to also be mm -hmm. certified. Now, again, a road construction project, and it depends on where the money comes from, sometimes that's federal money, mm -hmm. and it's tied, and it says that it, what percentage of that contract has to go to a woman-owned or minority-owned business. No. I just want to point that oh, out a lot so of time on you, transportation projects. And I see what you mean. You say the main company will have to subtract, I mean, uh, subcontract out to specific groups. Yes. Okay. But, and again, I want to make sure in that contract, and again, whoever they're, whoever is awarding the contract and, mm -hmm. and whatever agency, they may put in the contract that I want to see blank percentage of all the subcontracting has to go to a SWAM certified because it's tied to whatever agency. And those vary. There's not like a one <coughs> size fits all. It depends on the project. Okay. And again, it's all about relationships. It's not all about sales. And I can't stress that enough. Um, and if you're really bored and you want something to read over the weekend, you can actually go to the website and download the vendor's manual um, and Print it off in PDF or Word or bring it up on your tablet and read it. All things, but hopefully I'm going to give you enough to get you, get you going. But there are details on it. Some of the big spenders, it's no secret, VDOT is probably one of the biggest spenders. And then you've got State Police, uh, the DMME, Department of Mines, Minerals and Energy, Department of General Services. That's the Department of General Services is the agency that actually runs the EVA system. But they also, a lot of, um, they do some purchasing for like big purchases, like for example, if the, uh, the uh, I'm trying to think of the, it's not, the prison up in Homeacre, Appalachia, it's a state, but, but they want to, they need to buy uh, two or three cases of toilet paper, just for that example. They might want to just go through, go to, um, General services to do that purchasing, doesn't have to put it out on the bid, and some of those things. It's not a whole lot, but there, you can go there and find out on a DGS. Who's that? That's the acronym. And of course, all your colleges and universities. I mean, those are like mini cities, so they're buying everything from food to um, equipment to uh, services, you name it. And that's a, those are good opportunities to connect. Here's a little smorgasbord. Uh, there's no rhyme or reason, but this is, gives you an idea of what Virginia purchases in one year with these commodity codes. The soft drinks, we just did about 188,000. I guess they're pushing us to uh, take three out of the fountain. Um, grounds maintenance, mowing, edging, planting, uh, trees, um, all kinds of stuff, not trees, I guess shrubs and so forth. In one year, we purchased over $9.1 million. So I tell people, if you've got a John Deere and a truck and trailer, you might want to do some contracting out. Because you think of DMV, those are all state buildings. Um, a lot of your uh, social services buildings and so forth, all of those have to be maintained. So they have to contract out. They don't have staff to do that. So those are opportunities for a, a small business to tap into that. Um, tires, tubes, and passenger vehicles. I drive a state vehicle. I just can't pull up to Sears when I've got a flat and say, you know, I need to replace that tire. I gotta go through the system to find out who's SWAM certified and now micro business, and then 
you know, uh, could you give me a price? Those kind of things. Um, concessions catering, we did $7.3 million last year. Again, if you have a food-based business, I encourage you to get on there. You never know, you could, if you win a big deal, I mean, that could make a, whole, make a big difference in you buying that new KitchenAid mixer or whatever it is that you're wanting to do. It's another opportunity. Uh, we have a lot of state <coughs> buildings uh, last year. Those got to be maintained. We spent almost $5 million for that. So if you're a general contractor, you might want to look at going after that as an opportunity for you to do some contracting work. Like, you know, ever probably uh, 10 years or 15 years, DMVs usually have to do a little facelift, some painting and so forth. That's all contracted out. That's an opportunity for a small business to get an opportunity at that. Um, even we rent um, moving equipment, you know, like dozers and so forth. We did over four million of that. And then we have all these buildings and they have to be maintained and cleaned up. And so we did over 16 million in just custodial janitorial contracting. Another good opportunity for a small business. And that's just, that's not even uh, wet your whistle on that. There's so much opportunities, but that open your eyes a little bit about opportunities that you never thought about. I guess we can go on. But there's opportunities. When you're wanting to sell to the Commonwealth, not only you're on eBay, you need to get your business SWAM certified. That is done through our agency, uh, Department of Small Business and Supplier Diversity. You go to our sbsd.virginia.gov site, and it'll walk you through the steps to how to buy become SWAM certified. You'll see this link right here, how to become SWAM certified. And then what it will do is how do I become SWAM certified? You can do the registration online, just the same way that you've done with EVA. And I always tell people to do your EVA first because you already looked up everything. It's a lot easier uh, to, to do your SWAM. Because when you do your SWAM application, not only can you do it online, but you need to be connected to a printer. And the last page or screen that you come to, it'll say, print this and submit this application, which will have your tracking number and all on it, you'll have to submit that with your application to SWIM, but it'll also tell you this is the documentation that you have to um, attach to that application. It could be, well, if you've been in business for a while, usually it's the last three years tax returns. If you are registering it as a woman-owned business, uh, you'll have to show documentation that, yes, she owns 53% of the, of the business. If it's minority-owned, it'll tell you what uh, documentation you have to verify that is, is minority-owned. And I will tell you that if you've already been certified and it's time to be recertified, Virginia is getting really strict and to verify that, A, it is a woman-owned business, even though it's a construction and it's you do backhoe and loader work, you have to verify that she is an active member. It's not name only. They have to be active. And I've had this happen too for businesses that, you know, Virginia cannot discriminate who we purchase from. So you're going to see businesses from Tennessee, New York, I mean all over the country that are registered vendors. But before you can get on Virginia's site to be registered, for example, Tennessee, you have to get your business a certified in Tennessee as a, the way they call it, is a disadvantaged business. And their requirements are different from Virginia. So, but you have to be certified in your home state before Virginia will even consider you. But everybody in here is Virginia, right? Are you? Okay. But I have that, and I've had some vendors that, one was from Johnson City, and a couple years ago he called me as all upset. He said, Sandy, um, I've been, uh, they disapproved my recertification for SWAM. They said that I have to get certified in Tennessee now before Virginia will do it. And he said, our business does not qualify because I think in Tennessee you can't have more than 25 employees, but also I think your sales is no more than $2 million, And they far exceeded the sales to be considered. And he said, what do I do? And I said, well, looks like to me you've got two options, either A, you subcontract out, you find a vendor that's 
provides that same, they did industrial um, oils, uh, petroleum products for industrial. I said, I would find out someone else that's registered on Diva that's in Virginia that can provide that, or B, come on over to Virginia and set you up an operation. Never did hear from him anymore. I don't think that's what he wanted to hear, but that's the, that's the way. I don't make the rules, I just report them. <coughs> But that's, that's some of the things you need to think about. Uh, some common mistakes when people are registering uh, and keeping, um, and they're not getting their solicitation, just like what I said about that car dealership at Claypool Hill for my friends. You don't really have to guess who that was. But you need to make sure your contact information is up to date. Um, even if some businesses, small businesses, use their cell phone as their primary contact, but you might have gotten mad at one vendor, one uh, cellular, uh, and you wanted to change to another one and you couldn't move your phone number over. So keep that information up to date. And as owners of businesses, it's your responsibility to make sure if there's any changes that it, you need to have that changed on your, <coughs> on your account. Again, it's not our responsibility to let you know, uh-oh, your, your solicitations are uh, coming back. And I already said, don't make a mistake and say you want to see fax. Make sure everything that you put on there that you want to see email solicitations. So, you ready to get to work on that? Any questions so far? This is the fun part. I'm going to put, if I, I need a Colombo jacket so that we can start doing our, our research and, and investigating. So, what I want to do is show you how you can run reports. Just being on here is just one small piece of it. To me, the real value is when you start using the information to, to garner who is my target. How much, I'm getting ready to respond to a bid. I'm curious to see what they purchased, how much they paid for it the last time. Because what that does from a small business owner, that brings value to where I want to be smart. I don't want to underbid myself, but also I don't want to <coughs> leave a lot of money on the table. And this is allowing you to do your homework. And you'll be surprised at how many people don't even think to do that. So you ready? Now again, when you're ready to get on the system, this is the main page, eva.virginia.gov, and this can rotate and change depending on the activities they have on there. And again, where you can go and find out what agencies are on there, what state or what local government bodies are on there. If you don't know, you need to, to, to check. Again, I encourage you, make sure you reach out to the county and uh, city and town governments as well. I'm sure Pat, uh, Kathy that the town of Abington has someone that just does the procurement for the town? No, each department head. See, that's another thing. You need to know that. In Roanoke, everything goes through one procurement uh, agency and all the other heads have to go through there, so you need to know that. They vary from every locality. Each department head of the town goes through the town attorney who advises them whether they have to go, whether their, whatever their request is, is, is has to go through. Nee, do you know how the county does it here? No, I'm sorry, I don't. I think they have somebody that does procuring, but I'm not sure. I think our purchasing department can do that. Mm -hmm. So don't forget that, that target market. Um, and then here's another opportunity, too. I mentioned vendors, and I said earlier the competitors, but I always also think of them as a potential market. For example, if you have see someone that may have won that bid to provide um, the maintenance to all the college's HVAC systems, and I see they did it, and they're in Northern Virginia, I might want to connect with them and say, hey, I'm located in Big Stone Gap. I could do all of these colleges, and I'm SWIM certified, and I've also got my micro business designation. You could subcontract that out to me, and that would save you from sending a, a group of folks to you at the hotel and everything. There's another opportunity, and I'll provide the, the materials for this price. So don't just think of them as competition. That's a potential another market that you may not have known about. Um, when, I do, when you're starting out, you've already looked up what your um, EIN number, tax ID, and you've got your guns number. Now I need to do some homework and I want to find all the commodity codes that, that are available that reference what I do. On the main page, on the main bottom of the, of the 
front page, there's it says NIGP code lookup. You hit that link, and what it does is it brings you up to this page. And what you can do is, here's an example, I just put in engineering. And when it comes up, when I hit engineering, it'll give you not only anything that has relation to, to engineering, but also if you click some of those links, there's also additional numbers hidden underneath those main codes. And use those. Remember when I said catering? If you hit the catering in ITP code, then underneath it, it may be um, dessert trays, drinks, all of that will be under that. And you might you want to look at those commodity codes as well. And again, when you're getting ready to register, you hit register to become a vendor on EVA. And then it'll walk you through that process. We've kind of gone through that. And I've also given you a handout on um, how do you become <coughs> SWAM certified there. I gave you all kinds of stuff. Sacrificed a lot of trees. <laughs> but here is where, I, this is where it gets fun. On the main page, you'll see that it says Procurement Transparency and Public Reports. This is the little honey hole of information where you can now start doing your investigating, your research. And when you hit that, it's going to come up with another page. Now, this is where it gets exciting. I've got all kinds of stuff now I can find out. And by the way, it's free. I love this. For example, I sell uh, uh, I don't know, uh, professional architectural work. I'm a, I'm a certified architect and I want to do work. I can, first of all, and I've looked up, remember, I've, we've looked up all those commodity codes that reference what you do. So you can actually go and hit this. It says, who's buying what I sell? When that comes up, it'll bring up another link. And you have the option of putting in, you can put in one commodity code, or you can put all the commodity codes that reference what your business does. And it's a little faster this way. All you have to do is put a comma in between each commodity code that you put up there. And in this one, I'm going to do commodity spend by 703. What I want to do is just do a quick glance. I want to see the total amount that Virginia spent on just that one commodity code over the past six months. So I put that up, I want to do it by NIGP code, and I want to do the commodity code in uh, 92500. And then you put, you can do a custom. Even though it says it's three months, you can do six months before it will block. So when it comes up, it's now, I've run a report and it's going to show me that over the past six months, Virginia, uh, issued 123 purchase orders totaling $23 million for architectural work. Now I'm getting excited. I see now there's a market for my business in Virginia. Follow me? Okay. Now I want to find out more. I want to go to that. Um, the report is, I'm trying to remember, it's the 702 report. I want to find out now specifically what agencies are buying that, who the buyer is from that agency, how much they're spending, and also where it's shipped to because the ship to can be important to, depending on my product. So you put that in, you want to do it by commodity code, I'm doing a custom and I'm doing it by the six months, and I'm putting my commodity code. Remember, you can put all your commodity codes and do it all at once if you want. It just takes a little longer for it to run. So now it's going to run this big old, your screen could just be covered up with, uh, with this report. There's two pages of, of uh, spending on just that one commodity code. And you'll notice up there at the top, I have circled the Excel. Anytime you run one of these reports, you can download it as an Excel, which is great because now I can start then actually homing in and finding out, okay, I see this is being sent to Southwest Virginia Community College. There's the buyer. I can, you can start creating a database. You can also do historical <coughs> and see what they did last year and the year before. You might see a trend that it looks like they're procuring this around March and April time frame, which means they must be getting at the end of their budget. There's the time about February I want to start connecting with them and say, hey, I provide that service. You know, I want to let you know, and I'd love to be part of your solicitation. Bid before you can start working and looking. So what it does when this report comes up, it's going to show you the agency, 
of who won the bid. This is all important to you because I want to know who's getting these bids. Because I want to see what their commodity codes are, which will save you some time, but also there will be an opportunity for me to do some sub work with them, selling something. It'll tell me what the scope of the work is. It'll give you a line description. And then as it goes over, it's going to tell you what the unit price is, the total amount. Then it's going to tell you um, where it was shipped to. And here's the fun part. It's going to tell me who bought it from the state, from that Department of Military. It's even going to tell me their, their email address and their phone number. Can you find anything any better? <laughs> That's fun, isn't it? There's your database that you can create now. And then when you're getting introduced, and this is a market you want to target, and you've got your SWAM certification and your micro business, there's nothing stopping you from sending an email or sending some literature and say, hey, I want to introduce myself. I'm XYZ. We provide this service. We're located in blank, and we can service whatever geographic area love an opportunity to meet with you or have an opportunity to respond to any solicitations you may have because your member gets under that 10,000 that's what the networking comes in and it's exciting remember you can download this as an excel now i want to find out even more i want to see what my competition is doing i want to see what a competitor's done in the past six months because whoever they're about selling to I can be selling to that same agency. It's just a matter of me working. So if you hit report 701, you know what you can do is if you've already looked up, you know, remember on the front page where I said where you can show vendors, you can type in their name, and when it comes up, you can find their vendor ID number with the state, or you can do it by their name. But if you want to hone in on it, you can do it by their ID. In this case, I put in their, um, their EVA vendor number, and I'm doing this for Thompson and Litton. And I'm going to do it for the last six months. And then what that does is it's running a report and it's telling me every purchase order that the Thompson Linton did to the Commonwealth or received from the Commonwealth for the past six months. Now, can you go to the private sector and find that kind of market intelligence? So I see that they're doing a lot of work with um, this particular company with a lot of with Department of Corrections. So there's me a target that I need to go to, or it could be Southwest Virginia Community College. I say they're doing a lot of work. And I may be doing some subcontracting work for engineering. Maybe they're overloaded and they, instead of hiring somebody, they want to do some contracting out for engineering. That's where I come in. See the opportunity? Don't just be focused on just the state. Look at the big picture where you can also reach out to private sector markets. Um, and here's another fun thing, too, that a lot of people don't do, and I do this a lot for, for chambers and, and economic development offices. I want to find out what companies within certain zip codes are selling to the Commonwealth, which means I want to, maybe there's a, I'm doing a workshop in um, uh, Clifton Forge in a month, and I want to target businesses within the Clifton Forge and maybe the 25-mile radius of Clifton Forge. Um, I can manually go look up all those zip codes, but I learned there's a, um, a website called Zip Code Radius Finder. It's online. Don't do what I did. I used to go get my Virginia map out and look at the main, like where a post office is, and then have to do looking it up on the post office for the zip codes. The Zip Code Radius Finder app, or a, I'm used to saying apps, a website, you can put in the main zip code. And you can tell it, I want to look up all the zip codes in a 5, 10, 15, 25, 50 mile radius. And when you hit send, it will, send, it will show you every, per, uh, every zip code within that radius. For Washington County, it can show also uh, Meadowview, uh, Blade Spring, uh, uh, Bristol, how, however you did it. So here's one that I did for, um, for it looks like I probably did this one from Washington County and Bristol and the surrounding areas. And again, I want to do it for the last six months. You ready for the next screen? This is when it gets exciting. There, there is me a new database of contacts. This is great for chambers because I bet you 80% of these folks that are on here are flying under the radar screen. 
They didn't even know they were existing or they're not involved in chamber. Or if I'm a new startup business and maybe I'm doing catering, well, they may have one to do a party or uh, especially if I'm in office supplies. Any business operating has to have some kind of supplies, right? So there's me a database. By the way, I can save that as an Excel. I can download it. Um, now, I think they've stopped. I don't know if they still are keeping uh, the emails on there. I, I meant to check, but I forgot. Uh, but if not, you can still, at least you have a starting point. But in this case, this is in, um, yeah, this is all in the Abbott and Bristol uh, area. It's going to show me the company, where they're located, uh, who the contact is, phone, fax, email. It'll show me how many purchase orders in those last six months that, that they did to the state and what the total amount is and when their last transaction. Now, you can go and buy lists from those companies, but have you ever bought a list, a database, and how many of those are old, that they're not up to date? They go into that blank, blank hole, and I, you've spent a couple hundred dollars for that list. Now I have a list that I got. It's pretty cool, isn't it? And now I can start targeting them. You could either send them an email or, more importantly, if you're in the area, stop by, introduce yourself, give them information about your company, and there's an opportunity. You excited about that? And remember, on this, on this sheet, um, I've given you the step-by-step -step on all these reports and how you run it. This is an example of what solicitation, if you do receive a request for a proposal. This is just a, this is an older one, but it's pretty much the same thing. It'll give you information about the bid, and it'll usually it'll give you a link to where you can go, because a lot of times there are attachments. It could be in a PDF or in a Word document that gives you the details of that whole bid, and usually it could be 20 pages. depends on the project. And there's just one that's on an email. And then what that does, when you receive that, you would hit that link to where it'll take you right to that request for proposal and you can review the, all of it in detail and then when you're logged into your account you can actually respond uh, right there on your on your account um, and then you again I, I've showed you where you can find active solicitations and quick quotes you can actually hit that on the main page and bring it up here and then if you want to say okay I want to look for quick quotes that are under construction right now I hit construction and hit search, and it's going to show me all the active ones. And whenever you hit this hyperlink, that'll give you take you to another page where you can download the actual solicitation, the RFP with all the details, and who to contact, and so forth. Okay. Also, for your techies, Eva has a mobile app that you can download, and if you're on the go, you can respond and look up. Um, uh, for opportunities and search right there on your device. Here's an example of a screen capture I did with my iPad. And it'll show you if I just put in open solicitations and give me a listing. You want to, before we move on, you want me to go to the website? You want me to show you how to run an actual report? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It'll cost you extra, but I'll do that for you. That's just the way I roll. Just send the bill to John. Yeah. Well, you need to see what John is. No, okay, here's the main page. We're live on Eva. And I scroll down, and you remember I said that the honey hole of information is on that procurement public reports. So I click that. Hi. Now, I have access to all kinds of information. You asked me what did Washington County do last year. You see their orders by county? I'm not sure if it'll do this. Some of this is in Flash, and it doesn't always work. And I think that one is. Some of those reports. Sometimes they don't work, but I have to do it online. But it, you can go there and you can look up Washington County, or just hit it on the map, and it'll show you what the total amount of Washington County businesses did in the state. But if you want to find out who's buying what you sell, does anybody have a commodity code that they already looked up or know? If not, you can go to the main page. I have a question. Do you have to be registered to be no. able to ask? This is all public information. I'm not logged into anything. So what did you, 
Can you mind going back to the uh, uh, where you press to get to that page? This is the main page, and yeah. it's went to eva.virginia.gov. Okay. While we're there, I'm going to jump down and say NIGP code lookup. We can do a quick look up. Anybody uh, want to look up a commodity code they use? Everybody's quiet. I was trying to think of what mine was. Uh, TV? TV. That sounds good. What if they have it under TV or television? I will say that the system is not doesn't really like multiple words, so make it simple. So let's say that I want to do, um, I can sell these various things, anything that had to do with ah, the televisions and so forth, or there's equipment. I think what I'm going to put is television. Hey, Sandy. Yes, ma'am. Does the, do you service <coughs> providing industries work exactly the same as product providing industries? Now, what was that again? Well, like television is, is a thing, a product. Uh -huh. Do you service provision industries work yes. the same? Usually okay. service, if you're providing service, mm -hmm. it's in the 8,000 to 9,000. Okay. Um, and the lower numbers are you're actually selling the, the product. Okay. Could be you're selling TVs right. or tires. A concrete thing. So you can look up and see all of these. We can do the main one, 8400. Or we can also, um, you all know your product. You see, can you see these? Mm -hmm. uh, monitors, 8403A, um, 8405A for television hardware. Um, does people even sell the VCR combinations now? Yeah, I got one. Uh, video camera equipment. I think 4069. At least gave us four. Did I, is there another one you want before I do it? No, that would be good. Okay. Go back to the main page. To the home page. And I want to do a public report transparency. You know what, I don't have to do that, do I? <laughs> okay. First of all, maybe we want to see what Virginia purchased in that um, uh, spend at a glance in the past year. So I'm going to do 703. Open. And I'm going to put in by commodity code. And the date range, I'm going to do custom. It's always scary when you're doing it live. I, I'm just going to do it from January. I want to do it quick. And I want to do it from January 1st through yesterday. And now I want to do it by those specific commodity codes. So I'm going to put in the um, 8400. Put a comma, 80, pardon me? That's right. It's it's five. It's five. Uh, 84038, 8458, and 84069. When I've got it, I just hit run report. why it's always scary to do it live because you don't know if they're slow or your internet's slow or sometimes they're having issues. I will give you a tip. It seems like it's better to run reports in the mornings than in the afternoons because most of the time people are either A, they're putting in bids, requests, or B, people are responding to bids and it just seems like it gets bogged down. I probably should have just put one instead of doing that many. Anybody want to do a song or dance while we're waiting? I'd like to answer a question. Is okay. there um, 
there anything in here that you see pertaining to, uh, excuse me, yarn or classes or historical or? You could. I mean, all we have to do is to go into the NIGT code lookup, mm -hmm. just put in yarn or put in uh, uh, historical mm -hmm. or what have you. And it will give you if there's a commodity code first. We've got to have the commodity code. Mm -hmm. And then we can go and look up. Okay, here's. Here's a spin at a glance for the first three months of this year and those commodity codes. Gives you an idea. So the main one was uh, you've got almost 30,000. I would suspect a lot of this done is at the end of their year. So you got to you see it on that one. Now I'm going, instead of having to type all those in again, I'm going to block and copy those. And, okay, I want to see what agencies is actually buying that. So I want to say, who's buying what I sell? I want to open it. I want to do it by specific commodity code. Today. And I'm going to do that as well. From the first of the year, did I not hit that? Are you getting an idea of how you can do this not just for public sector but also private sector businesses? Okay. I'm going to do a report and I want to see who's been buying this for the first three months of the year and those same commodity codes. Okay. Here's the report. Remember, anytime you run a report, you can save it as an Excel and download it on your computer. But it's going to show me uh, what the agency was, who they purchased from what it was for, how much they paid for it, and who it was shipped to, and the buyer. So you know where you need to quote. Yes, and who you need to target too. Remember, that's under 10,000. You might you want to be part of that quick quote and let people know that we want to send you a bid request. You think it's hard? It's pretty easy. Now, if you want to, uh, if you want to find out, here's another thing. If you want to, you provide, you supply this type of projects, pro, uh, products or services, depending on what you're looking at. And I want to look for maybe some subcontracting opportunities for somebody that, especially if I'm in construction or what have you. You can actually go there. That see that 720, a vendor search by name or by commodity code. Since I have all those commodity codes in there, I'm just going to put them in there. And I want to find every business that's registered to provide that, those products uh, in Virginia's procurement. And you'll probably see some businesses that are not just Virginia firms. <coughs> So there's me another database to contact. These are, you can think of them as competitors, or there's me another potential market. There's eight pages of folks that have those four commodity codes in their, um, in their account. It'll tell you the company, where they're located, who to contact, Can you find anything better in the private sector market? And then if you want to do some prospecting within your radius of your business, for whatever it be, if it be a nonprofit and you're looking for, um, you know, partners or for solicitations or you are wanting to just to sell products or services too. You can actually, I want to find every business 
in the past, let's say, uh, I'm going to go from July to December. And then uh, 24614, come on, y'all throw out some, some emails or some zip codes for me. Anybody? 24641. 24214 for Abington. Mm -hmm. Any others? 24211. Oh, I see. I got that one. Oh, did you? Okay. Anybody? 24211. Okay. So now this is going to run a report, and this is going to tell me every business that is located in those zip codes that sold something to the Commonwealth over the past six months. John, do a little song and dance while we wait. Okay. You want to uh, go ahead and start singing for me before I, <laughs> so you can give me a tune, a melody? Has anybody actually been on the EVA system before at all? It's been fun. I've done this a little bit. <coughs> so I've got two pages of me a database that I can connect to. It's going to tell me who the business is, <clears throat> uh, it's also going to give me their email address. Chamber, are you listening to this? Well, there's an opportunity to, to uh, network and also for the, the, uh, the newspaper. It's going to tell me, and by the way, remember I can download this as an Excel so I can clean it up before I do anything. But it's going to tell me the business, who to contact, how many transactions they've sold to the Commonwealth, and the last sale day. Who's Dustbusters? Oh, it's Joe Sneed. It, well, that's eighteen hundred dollars in six months. I mean, it's not, it's not going up. Uh, There's Gardner. They did eleven million, eleven point seven million. Now, are you excited? Some printing done, don't you think? Uh, did you, what code did you use for this one? I used Grundy, and I think that I put uh, Vansant, yeah, I put Vansant zip code. You're searching just by zip codes. I know it's, that, but why do you search it? Just business and uh, this is business. Uh, it's the, the, it's the, it's the, it's the uh, 704 report. It, I'm doing it by zip codes, and I put in, I put in those zip codes, and I said, in the last six months, I want to target businesses that have sold something to the Commonwealth. This is great for businesses starting out that you, especially, again, I keep saying catering, but this is a great opportunity uh, that where you can target. And it's great for uh, nonprofits. And it's right there. It's free. So you can think you can do these now? Yeah, I have a better idea. Well, I like it, too, where you can download it. And then you can start cleaning it up, and there you created you a new database that you might want to. Again, you have uh, you have folks in the area. Hey, why don't you, on your way back, uh, once you made your deliveries, why don't you stop by X Y Z firm and introduce yourself and let them know we're out there. What's stopping you? It's just that little extra effort to be going out of 
literature competition out of it. Are you glad you came? Was it worth your, your uh, admission? Yes. Very good. And then I highly, 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 highly recommend that you get your business SWAM certified. You need, you want, every small business in Virginia wants at that special set aside. And we do that, and again, just like I showed you earlier, you go on the I Sell to Virginia, and you want to become SWAM certified. You've got that on your handout, and then how do you become certified? And then when you go on, this is the online application, and just... You answer these questions, you go to the next screen, you keep answering, you ask, or it'll ask you and you fill it in the blanks. It'll ask you, and this is important, that's why it's good for you to go ahead and do your EVA first because you've got to look up a lot of this information. And uh, you have to list if it's a partnership, for the, how the ownership structure of your business, you have to list it on there because that's all part of your SWAM, your application and review. Um, what kind of business, what do you offer, the services? Uh, then when you're finished, it'll, uh, when you hit that, when you hit continue, the last screen that comes up again, be sure you're at your, uh, a printer because you can't go back. You'll have to start your application again. Been there, done that. I'm giving you, that's Sandy's one of her tips for today. And then it'll tell you, the last screen will tell you, this is the documentation that you have to send in with your application. I'll give you another hint. When you send in, because, again, if you're established business, use this last three years tax returns, any information on the structure of your organization, who the owners, and so forth, when you send that in, make a copy of everything you send because humans are touching it at the post office and humans are touching it in Richmond. And, you, and keep a record of that, that um, tracking number because in two months you've still not heard anything, you can call our, our number and say, I want to check the status of, and here's the tracking number. That'll help a lot to get you to where you can find where you're at uh, on the process. And I will give you another little um, tip. Sometimes, let's say that uh, this happens sometimes on uh, a VDOT contractor, and uh, there's a job that comes up, and they know this business could, could, could do the work but they've not gotten their SWAM certification yet. It's been sitting up there or it's been being reviewed for the last two months. Uh, VDOT could actually write a letter to uh, review to our folks in Richmond and say, you know, I understand this company, XYZ, has submitted an application for SWAM. We really want to do business with them. I mean, if there's anything you can do to help. We don't want to lose, have you lose an opportunity, but these are steps we have to verify. We all have rules and guidelines and we want to make sure everybody's treated fairly and, and so forth. So that would something that if you need that, uh, you have it. And again, the micro business, if you've not done your swam and you're doing it, you can actually do it while you can do both at the same time or if you've been swam for a while, you can actually do the swam certification, but you have to be certified or swam certified before you can get your micro. But again, a micro is less than 25 employees and no more than uh, three million in sales, and that gives you access to that ten thousand or less set aside. And um, if you haven't done it and you want to become on the main page at the main bottom, you'll see this bullet. And there's a link there, and if you click that, that'll take you to. Um, you like my? <laughs> you like my animation? That will take you to. Um, it'll take you, bring you up to this this page. Uh, there's also, um, I've showed you here on our page where there's, it says required documentation. You ought to look at that too. That way you're, you've gotten all your ducks in a row because you wouldn't be waiting two months and think, oh gosh, I forgot I, we didn't attach this and we were supposed to. So you can go there and look. This is, this is on our page, our main page, and if it's SWAM certification, you'll see there where it says you can download this. And, um, I've actually put you a copy of uh, it's this one, owner's title sheet. You, you want to include that too. That'll help speed that process along as well. Here's what it looks like. And when you're doing that, when you're sitting your, um, sending in your documentation, you can go ahead and check there if you want to go ahead and do your micro business.
you're in your 20s. <coughs> um, and this is a little bit from the governor on what that micro business but then the bolts is if it's under um, uh, 25 jobs and no more than 3 million. And this micro does, they go pretty fast. It can be less than two weeks, you can get your micro business designation. Any questions? So you said if you're an existing business, you have to send three years of tax returns. No, if, yeah, if you're, if, just, if, if you're just, if you're a new business, what, yeah, what you can do is how your business, it'll tell you, maybe you want to show, like if you just got your um, corporation papers, you'll send that with it. However, it's okay. however you set it up, it will tell you what documentation that has to be attached to it. Questions? Remember, just being on it, just like on social media, that's just, registering is all part of it. You have to work it, and I can't stress enough, is building those relationships with those buyers. Trust me, that'll come in handy. And don't assume that everything's correct. It's periodically, and again, if someone leaves and they were your point of contact, go there and change your information. If you need help, you can always uh, yell at me. Well, don't yell at me. Kathy does that enough. But um, you can uh, contact me or uh, some of the other partners in our agency that can help you. Um, the SWIM expires after every so long. It's a three-year certification, and you have to renew. Okay, so the EDA does it expire every month? Okay, so once I've got it, I'm fine. And usually when you do your EVA, probably the next day, you'll see you'll be listed. But really, it doesn't do you any good until you get your SWIM because they're really – the, they're mandated, they've got to do those, um, the 42% has to go to a SWAM, and that's what most of their purchasers are doing, is checking. Yes? And any one of those categories is sufficient to, to allow you to be SWAM certified, right? Yes. Small, Small or and or, and or woman, or, yeah, minority. Okay. Because a lot of businesses are just uh, small. Okay. Thank you. Question? I know we're just a few minutes over, but we were a little later um, getting, getting going. Any other questions? Does this help you? Mm -hmm. You excited about a new market of opportunity? Uh, next week um, is if you are struggling with social media, we have a consultant that's going to be here next week um, that's going to help you with your social media. And she is a guru in Facebook, Twitter, and all things social media. And I encourage you to come. You can't beat the price. Bring your lunch. And um, we've got other ones coming up. And I, I hope that you uh, enjoyed today. If you will, fill out the evaluation or uh, do it on your device. But uh, I thank you for coming. And anybody got anything for the calls that they want to add?